because this hypothesis is a theory um, in development economics dealing with income inequalities in the developed and developing world. And what it does, it explains um, how as a country develops, there are varying levels of income inequality as measured by the Gini index. So what Kuznets is arguing is that there's a relationship between income distribution and the level of development of a country. Initially, before development, income is fairly evenly distributed, even though there's only a limited amount of income. However, as development takes off, entrepreneurs see incomes rise faster than those remaining in uh, working on the land or working in factories. However, at a later stage, society redistributes income to the poor through um, welfare systems and that the inequality gets becomes less. So the y-axis is a Gini index showing inequality and the x-axis is development. At a low level of development, there's quite a lot of equality. Then, as we go through the development stage, we get a high level of inequality and then um, as society becomes fully developed, the inequality falls. So if we look at the UK as an example, the UK developed in Victorian times, and at that point there was a lot of poverty in the cities, in the factories, um, and entrepreneurs became very wealthy. However, in the 20th century you see the development of college pensions and uh, the benefits system, and that uh, leads to a reduction in inequality. In Brazil, however, you see, which is going through its uh, development at the moment, you see a huge discrepancy between the incomes of the rich and the poor, and very little in the way of welfare systems. However, Brazil is now starting to develop a stronger education system, and it's to be expected that over time, the inequality will fall, and the welfare system will be developed. And this is, you know, this analysis uh, of the process of development is how the Kuznets hypothesis is used.